finally arrived to the airport. It was crazy this morning. Security was like, the line was so long, but one thing about O'Hare is they're gonna get you through security. They're definitely gonna get you through security. And here we are. y'all y'all know i'm adventurous right i decided to what did i decide to do i decided to get on the bus here i'm on the bus check it out i'm at the airport and i am headed to take a trolley and the trolley will take me to the border and then at the border i'll walk over and then i'll take a uber and then I'll have my first medical appointment of the day. So excited, woo -hoo. Here is the trolley to take me over to the border. Okay, I just got off the trolley and I am going to walk across the border. Mexico, here we go. Arriving to get dental and surgery consultation. Woohoo! excited they brought me implants so I can test them out and see what size I'm gonna get so I literally just had one hell of a day I wake up this morning at like well my flight is supposed to leave at 8 10 so I make sure that I wake up at like 5 15 that'll give me enough time to get ready to go to the train to go through security and get on my flight right everything works out stunningly and then my flight gets delayed y'all we didn't leave until like after 9 30. landed safely in san diego thankfully everything was going just fine got to san diego took the bus to the trolley took the trolley to the border walked across the border once i got across the border took a Uber to the um, medical center. And then I had my dentist appointment first. That was the first thing I did. And I get all this dental work done, um, but I have to go back to actually get my crowns put on. So everything's going swimmingly fine. Just wanna have a little day, which is very long, very tiring, but it is what it is. So I go to use the bathroom at the um, dentist and tell me why as I open the door to leave out of the bathroom, I hit my nose on the door and you can see this bruise slash bump. And then my nose started bleeding. It was horrible, y'all. Oh my God. But everything went fine at the dentist though. I just have to go back. Um in a couple of days and get the crowns put on. They had to do the moldings and do all that kind of good little stuff. So consultation. Now this is the good part, okay. So I have my consultation with the surgeons and the first thing that they wanna do is they want me to kind of get a feel for the um, breast implants and kind of decide on what size I want. So I went with 450 cc, which is rather large. Um, but it's also in proportion to my body, um, my chest, um, my height, my weight, you know, just and also what kind of like results that I want. And she said that that would give me maybe like around a D cup. So that's kind of what I'm, you know, want. She said, um, but if they get in there and it's not enough implant to fill me out, she said that they would go up a little bit. 
and she said if they go in there and the pocket is too small for that of a big implant then they would go down a little bit but she said it would be somewhere in there so she's like tempering my expectations basically and then she goes on to assess my body so they look at my body and the first thing that they're addressing is my stomach and ugh, she told me what I did not want to hear. And basically she said that with doing the circular tummy tuck, or you could say call it a, you know, tummy tuck with a lower body lift where the cut goes all the way around. She said that you would get good results, but you would get better results if you got the fleur de lis. And I do not want that cut going up and down my stomach. She said, but you can always you know come back and get it cut later on if you decide that that is still too much skin on your abdomen so i'm just like oh but i only have one person to blame and that is me because i decided to get that big <laughs> and now it's like i got all this loose skin on my body so i didn't want to hear that but it is what it is i kind of felt that that might be the case for my stomach and it was the case for my stomach, unfortunately. So beyond that, they're very confident that I'm gonna get some pretty good results. They did reiterate the fact that I don't have a lot of fat to take, which kind of makes me feel good um, because I am getting a BBL. So the fat that they're gonna get is gonna go in my booty. So I'm not gonna have like, you know, a huge donk. It's just gonna be like, a good size butt because I really have no butt right now and um yeah they just complimented me on the base I have a very good base you know a smaller um waist and you know round full hips um naturally so what they're gonna do is they are going to work their magic they're gonna get this skin off of me and um hopefully I will be happy y'all oh my gosh oh I'm so nervous I'm so nervous but tomorrow I have labs at eight o'clock in the morning and then I have to meet with the doctor that's gonna run um, my EKG test and that's not until 6 30 and then at that time I'm gonna make my payment and I'm also gonna get my medications hopefully my labs come back um, good because I for sure have been taking all my supplements and um, every morning I've been waking up for the past um, two weeks when I've been off the supplements, I have been drinking a cocktail of strawberries, beets, spinach and coconut water and protein powder to hopefully um, raise my hemoglobin even further and to kind of like, you know, get me on the route of being healthy and ready for surgery and all that good stuff. So that's about it for today, y'all. I'm so freaking tired. Um, I'm going to get a good night's rest and I will see you guys in the morning for labs. Oh, and man, I had some good food today. I didn't even feel like blog vlogging it but oh my god it was so good <laughs> it was like some carne asada it was supposed to be like um with some cheese and they had all the fixings like on the bar they had like guac and uh, grilled onions and <sighs> everything that you could think of salsa and everything and it was just <sighs> It was so good. Oh my goodness. And it was so much food. Um, but today was an adventurous day. It was lovely. It was wonderful. It's been long. It's been real. I will see you guys tomorrow for labs. Alright, so I'm just popping in here to let you guys know how my morning went. So I went and got my blood work done. I showed you guys a little bit of that and she poked me in one arm. It didn't work out. <laughs> so she had to poke me in my other arm because my veins are stupid. But good thing is she got the blood and I already got my results back. It literally took less than two hours to get my results back. And they're awesome because they like, 
you know, took all my information, took my telephone number, and they like messaged me on like WhatsApp. And then when the results were ready, they messaged me with my results. And I was like, oh, so I was really worried about my hemoglobin, of course. I've been really working hard on trying to get it up. And I got it up to 12.3. And I needed a 12 for surgery. However, <laughs> it's a big however, right? The doctor is recommending I get an iron infusion before surgery and also after surgery. And I'm 100% going to take the doctor up on that offer. The reason being is because I'm going to lose blood during the surgery. And I don't want to pass out. I don't want to have to get a blood transfusion. Like, I just want to be safe as possible. And I just want to be, you know, like, I want to make it through this. <laughs> so I'm going to get an iron infusion today, right before I have to do my EKG electrocardiogram to test my heart. Um, so I'm going to get that today. And that's going to be $150. And then I have to get it tomorrow again after surgery. So you know, it's no big deal. I'm just glad that the doctor is recommending things for me and trying to be as safe as possible. And I'm also glad, you know, that I brought extra money and it's recommended that you bring extra money. I tried to ask about as many things like as I could remember that would be extra money just in case I needed a blood transfusion, just in case I needed to get my hernia repaired. Like if I had a hernia, I don't suspect I have one, but who knows, you know? So I was trying to think about everything that I could think of. And I didn't even think about an iron infusion until I thought about my results today. And I had saw other girls saying that they got iron infusions to try to bring up their hemoglobin. And I thought about it today and I was like, I wonder, is that even a possibility? So apparently it is a possibility. The doctor wanted us to be at a 12, at least for surgery. I did that, but I didn't know that... <laughs> I was still going to need an iron infusion, but that's fine. I'm just glad that that part is good to go. And like, ooh, surgery is coming. I just got to uh, get my heart, my EKG done or whatever. But after that's done, I'm going to let you guys know how the um, EKG went. And I'm going to let you know how the iron infusion went. I'm, I'm kind of, I guess, excited, you know, for everything to get done and everything like that. Um, but right now I'm back in the room. I'm just relaxing. I talked to my family a minute ago. Um, I also last night made a very emotional, like crying video for my baby. And I just want him to know that I love him and, um, you know, how that thing goes. If you have kids, if you don't have kids, think about everybody in your life that you love or that loves you. And, you know, you can kind of feel where I'm coming from with that. That's about it for now, but I'm going to pop in later and we're going to talk about the iron infusion and also we're going to talk about um, the EKG situation and then we're going to get ready for surgery in the morning. Oh my gosh, it's almost here. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. I just wanted to get some live action of me getting my iron infusion. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that, but it is going well so far. It just started. Once again, she had trouble getting my vein. She messed up my hand, but now it's in my arm. So I just gotta do this. Ugh. And then I meet with the um, doctor to do my EKG for my heart electrocardiogram. And then after that, I have to get my meds for tomorrow. But that's pretty much it for the final preparations for surgery tomorrow. Ooh, I'll be back. I just want to give you guys just a little snippet of where I'm staying, the little area I'm staying in. It's, it's popping. I ain't gonna lie, it's popping. surgery tomorrow oh my goodness hi guys i'm back so the iron infusion went well 
while I was in the process of getting my iron infusion, the doctor came to do my EKG. Along with the EKG, he also does like a full physical to make sure that I am healthy enough to get the actual surgery. So basically he's clearing me for surgery. So he met with me while I'm still getting the iron infusion and he um, just asked me a whole bunch of like health history questions and he took put that thing on my finger i guess that's like to catch my pulse or something and then he took my blood pressure and then he kind of looked me over and he had me like breathe in deeply i guess he was like listening to my lungs and stuff yeah that was pretty much it for the physical part like he touched my kneecap and he touched my ankle and like i don't know what he was you know what they do for a I guess a normal physical or whatever and then he um put the little things on me to do the EKG and he was like oh everything looks good <laughs> and then that was pretty much it it was really easy really simple I finished my iron infusion and then that was it that was it you guys that was it so I just have to get my medicine I guess I'll get my medicine tomorrow. They said um, they're going to give it to me eight after surgery, I think. I'll get my medicine, my meds or whatever. So, yeah. That's it. Surgery in the morning. I'm going to let you guys know everything on how it goes. I have to be there at 6 a.m., which I'm not too excited about. But surgery is at 9, so... I don't know what the heck they do <laughs> for three. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for three hours. I know that I'm going to have to like sign a whole bunch of paperwork. Um, but other than that, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for three hours. But I'll let you guys know when I find out what I'm going to be doing. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous. I guess I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Toodles. So I've arrived at the hospital. This is where I'm gonna actually have my surgery. And I'm gonna take you guys on just a little mini tour just to look at the inside here. Botox. <laughs> Awards. Little nice little lobby. And back there are the rooms. My new life, my new body. We're gonna see. Okay, so this is my temporary room. They're putting me in here before I go into surgery. This is where I'm gonna get dressed at. I have the consultation with the doctors, but after surgery, my actual room is just gonna look basically the same, but it'll just be a different room. So now I'm just waiting to get my gown and changed, and then the doctors will come in and then it'll be go time. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm keeping you guys up to date, play by play on everything that's going on. So um, after I finished filling out all my paperwork, they took my height and my weight and then they brought me back to the room. I already showed the little room tour. And then I had to put on my gown, which I have on, and then I had to put on these long compression socks. And then once I did that, then they hooked me up to this little IV thing right here, as you can see. And when she put that IV in me, it hurt so freaking bad. Oh my God, it hurt. I guess that's just one of the many pains to come, but um, yeah, so now I guess I guess just waiting on the doctors to come and mark me on up and then I'll be ready to go to surgery. Oh my god. Oh, and the lady from the hospital she came and asked me what I wanted for dinner and I'm gonna have chicken tostados. So we'll see how everything goes. See you later, alligator. It's the last day of this tummy. <laughs> okay. So I'm still waiting on the doctors, but like two people just came in my room and it's like, they keep asking me the same questions, which is fine. I guess they just want to double check that um everything checks out and I'm going to be safe. The first guy came in, 
he was like, oh, he's a doctor here at the hospital. And he was just verifying my health history once again. And then a couple of minutes later, a lady came in and she said she was from the pharmacy. So I guess she's the one that's going to be like getting my, my medicine, anesthesia, pain meds, all that stuff together. And then she asked like if I had any allergies and something else she asked me. I don't know, but they keep asking me the same questions, which I guess is better safe than sorry, but I'm still waiting on the surgeons to come. So it's surgery day. Oh my gosh. Okay, bye. So I already talked to an anesthesiologist and everything was fine there. I waited maybe about 15 more minutes and the surgeons finally came in. They marked me all up and I talked to them. So I gotta wait and now they're just gonna wheel me to the OR and it's gonna be go time, y'all. So I guess the next time you hear from me, I'll be waking up from anesthesia. So nerve wracking. I'll see you guys later. I'm out of surgery and everything went well. So right now, like I'm in my little um, room or whatever. So uh, after they marked me up, I waited maybe like five minutes, not that long. And then they wheeled me to the operating room. And once I was in the operating room, I had to get up on the table. The nurses, they were there, you know, preparing the operating room with the materials and everything. And then the anesthesiologist was um, preparing her stuff as well. And uh, she put a little oxygen on me. And um, she said like, your sedation is going to be ready um, here shortly. And I was like, okay. And this took place all in a matter of maybe five, 10 minutes. And um, I felt myself like getting tired. And I was just like, Ugh, it's just the morning time, like whatever, you know. And then before you know it, I was knocked out. <laughs> and then um, I know this is gonna sound like really scary, but I think I woke up during surgery, maybe like three times. And I know that sounds very scary, but it really wasn't at all. It was more like, I felt like I was kind of like hallucinating. I felt like I was dreaming. So it like literally was not scary and it was not a big deal. I was maybe woke for like two seconds and the doctors was like, oh, you can go back to sleep. <laughs> and I just went back to sleep. It was kind of funny actually. And then I fully woke up um, and then they wheeled me to the recovery room. And once again, I was so drowsy. I was so sleepy. I was so tired. Um, and they were asking me like, do you feel sick? Do you feel nauseated? Are you okay? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then they took my vitals and everything. Um, and I just went back to sleep. Like, I was like, mm, no. <laughs> So once um, I was fine or whatever, you stay there for a little while just so they check on you, make sure everything's all good. They wheeled me to my room. Once I got into my room, um, they took my vitals again. They took my blood pressure. They took my temperature. They took, I guess, my pulse or whatever. They put that little thing on your finger just to make sure you're all good. Um, and they, you know, asking me, was I nauseated? They gave me this little... I guess a little small little bedpan thingy um, to check and see um, like if I'm have to you know vomit or whatever and I feel fine or whatever and I told him I feel fine because some people just react to the anesthesia and I was like no I'm okay I'm okay and um, they would come in and check on me every now and then just to make sure I was fine or whatever um, they gave me some water some jello um, jello. I said they gave that to me first just to because I was saying like I was thirsty, and oh my gosh, and my family they were blowing my phone up. Um, at first, I was gonna go when I when I got to my room when they were checking on me, I just went back to sleep because I was just so freaking drowsy and tired and everything. And then I started hearing my um, I turned my phone off, but my watch was still on. And I heard it ringing and I was like, oh, let me get my, let me call my family. So the next time they came in to check on me in the room or whatever, I woke up 
and I called my family back and, um, you know, just talked to them. They just wanted to hear my voice and they ensured, you know, I ensured them that everything was okay. They were happy or whatever. And I've pretty much been chilling since, just drinking my water. I ate one of the Jellos, and then they brought me some oatmeal to eat. The oatmeal was not the best, which is fine, because I wasn't very hungry at all. So I ate a little bit of the oatmeal. I know that I have to eat, and I know that I have to get my protein in. Um, so hopefully tomorrow I'll be feeling a little bit better, and I can have more um, food for breakfast. Um, because you guys know I don't eat pork. And I know that's all they serve is pork, pork, pork at breakfast. But hopefully maybe I can have some food and I can feel a little bit better um, as far as like eating goes. But other than that, I'm fine. Like they, they were asking me if I was in any pain or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm fine. The only thing, the only thing is I'm a little uncomfy. My butt is freaking numb. Um, but as far as pain goes, I feel in my tummy. Um, you can feel it in my tummy, like where they did the muscle repair. It just feels sore there. Like I've been doing a lot of sit-ups. Um, but not like a lot of pain. So these pain meds are kicking in. <laughs> so that's good. Um, and in my breasts, like, I feel like a little heavy on my chest. And they look really big. So, yeah, I'm kind of worried about that. I didn't want them too big, but I didn't want them too little. But from all the ladies that I talked to, they say that, oh, I wish I would have got them bigger. I wish I would have got them bigger. I wish I would have got them bigger. Um, but I never really heard anybody say I wish I would have got them smaller. Like, maybe one or two. Like, not many. So, I don't know. The doctor said that it could go either way once they got in there about what size that I was going to get. So, hopefully, they're just swollen and they'll go down a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's just, you can feel them there. Um, but, and I can tell, like, I'm just kind of, like, a little short on my breath. Um, I guess because the heaviness of my chest now. Um, but when the nurses come back in and check on me, I'll ask them about that. But everything has been all good. And I'm just so thankful right now. Like, you guys do not know how thankful I am. Um, but I'll check back in with you guys on tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to get up. We're going to walk around. Um, and hopefully, I'll be able to eat. And I'm supposed to be discharged in the afternoon. And then the recovery home is going to pick me up and we're going to go there to recover. And they're going to take care of me for about a week. And then I go home in a week. So I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm so happy right now. And then I get to talk to my baby a little bit later. Um, but you guys just don't know how happy I am. And honestly, how good of an experience I've had so far here and just with everyone, like, I, Mexican people are nice as hell, like, <laughs> they've been so nice to me, like, even at the grocery store I went to, even at the restaurant, um, and my Mexican is, I mean, my Spanish is horrible, y'all, like, is it not good, I know enough to just kind of get me around and, you know, but, yeah, and they've been very accommodating to me. They haven't looked at me like I'm crazy. They haven't stared at me. The only thing they've done is just give me compliments because they love my braids. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, the time I've had here, the experience that I've had, like, so far, it's just been excellent. Like, I'm so happy about that because you do get a little nervous um, traveling and I've traveled a lot, um, but every time you get a little bit nervous and then for surgery, it's like, oh my gosh, like, so I cannot like tell you guys enough, like the good experience that I've had and I just hope it continues and I just hope I can be safe and I can make it home without complication and once I get home, I have no complication and I just heal nicely. 
But other than that, y'all, I'm going to catch y'all tomorrow. I'm going to continue to rest and recuperate. I'll let y'all know how things go. Good night. <laughs> good morning. So I'm waking up in pretty good spirits with a little bit of complaints. Okay, so this is the deal. The deal is, is that yesterday I was supposed to get dinner. I never got dinner. So they did bring me water, jello, some sport to drink, some bra, and oatmeal. I drank all my waters. <laughs> You know, I'm a thirsty girl. I drank my sports drink. Well, it might have not been a sports drink, but something for electrolyte. It was probably electrolyte. That's what they usually uh, use down here. And I ate one of my jellos. I really wasn't that hungry, honestly, but I still wanted my dinner. I wanted to taste my tostado. And I ate maybe a couple of bites of that oatmeal. It just wasn't very good, but it was okay because I wasn't really hungry. But of course I woke up and I'm hungry and I want my food. So the kitchen doesn't open up until seven o'clock. So I should have breakfast by 8. And right now the time is 7.10. But I woke up very early this morning. I woke up at about maybe like 4.30 or 5. 4.30 or 5. I can't remember. Um, I woke up and of course uh, my butt is numb. And it's not painful. I'm just numb and uncomfortable. Which really freaking sucks. And um... Oh, I'm just like, oh, I want to get up. I want to get up. I want to get up. Uh, but I can't get up. So I had that little complaint about my food I didn't get last night. But then I also had a little complaint today. So I know it takes a while for the nurse to get the doctor or whatever. Or whatever kind of little protocol that they have going on. So I call for the nurse to come in. The nurse comes in. And I tell them that, you know, I have a little dent in my butt. Because, you know, I'm touching myself. I want to see what's going on. And I have a dent in my butt and it scared the hell out of me. I'm like, oh my God, I did not get all of this to have a dent in my butt. So that was my main concern. And then I also asked him about the breakfast. So like an hour rolls past. He never came back. So... The porter comes back. He just assists around the hospital. He'll bring you your food. He'll wheel you into OR. I don't really know what else he does. That's all I know that they do. Um, but they're assisting. So he comes in and he asks me what I want for breakfast. He takes my order. And then while he's there, the nurse kind of like slips in. Um, because I did also ask him earlier about meds. Um... Or maybe, no, 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 no. I didn't ask him about meds until the porter came in and got my breakfast. And so I asked him about meds or whatever. Because at that time, I was numbing my butt. But I was like, eh, I better ask about meds too. Because it seems like I don't get meds unless I ask. That's a little shady. That's a little suspicious. But I'm going to keep asking. Because I don't want to feel any pain. Like, no. Absolutely not. Um, but like I said, it's numb. And, like, I feel my muscle repair, like, you know, when I laugh or whatever. Or just, ha, 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 ha. And, like, if I deep breathe. So, um, yeah, I asked about that. The porter left. He left to go get my meds taken care of or whatever, which was good. Um, he came back fairly quickly um, with my meds. So, first he's going to give me antibiotics. That's what I get first. And then I'll get my pain meds after the antibiotics, which is great. Um, and then the doctor finally came in and I talked to the doctor and he told me that the dent was an incision that, that that's in my butt. And he also said that it's inflamed. So there's inflammation there. And he said it should go down. Now, my nurse, my surgeon's nurse is supposed to come in this morning they don't know what time someone told me yesterday it should be around 9 or 10 so hopefully she comes and she takes a look at everything and everything's good to go we'll see to be continued and also to be continued on my breakfast because I'm hungry and I'm ready to eat but I got like 45 minutes they said I should get it by 8 hopefully it comes earlier and um also um, I'm waiting on my pain meds still. My antibiotics are like almost done. They almost done. 
and I also have a catheter in me. I didn't know I was going to have a catheter, but I guess I have one because I can't get up. So, yeah, that hasn't been uncomfortable or bad or anything. So, I don't know, but yeah. I don't think I have anything else too much to share. Just wanted to pop in this morning and let you guys know how everything's going. I'm in pretty good spirits. Um, oh, yeah. And the only other thing that I'm having a problem with, I asked the doctor about this, too, is like a little heaviness, tightness in my chest. Like, it's kind of a little bit hard for me to catch my breath. And he told me that that's normal with the implants and then also being wrapped very tightly, as you can see. And they're freaking huge, man. I don't know. Maybe they're normal size for some people. I don't know. But they feel freaking huge to me. Let me know if you think they're huge. They look they look huge to me. Or maybe it's because I haven't had boobs in so long. <laughs> but, well, I guess maybe. It's a handful, so I don't know. And then it's wrapped, so it has bandages here, too. So maybe they're not as big as I'm thinking that they are. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'll let you guys know about my breakfast. I'll let you guys know about my nurse's visit. Um, and then I'm supposed to go to the recovery home at one o'clock today. So hopefully everything goes fine. Everything goes well. And, um, today is Thursday. So tomorrow I will have my first follow-up visit with my surgeons. Um, and then I also have the remainder of my dental work to get done tomorrow as well. And I'm also supposed to be getting an iron infusion tomorrow. So of course, I will keep you updated and I will let you know about all that good stuff. Catch me on the other side. But today is the flat side. And look at that. It's all bandaged up so you really can't see anything. But as soon as I see, oh my goodness, I'm for sure going to let you guys know. And oh yeah, I'm supposed to get my before and after pictures today at 11 o'clock. I'm still a little insecure, y'all. Y'all forgive me about my hesitancy to show those photos, but we'll see, depending on how they look. <laughs> All right, bye, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Okay, you guys, so I am up, and I am getting ready to go to the recovery home. I'm just waiting on them to get here. So I did have breakfast this morning. I had a spinach omelet, just with spinach and eggs and cheese and toast. And it was pretty good, no complaints at all. And then um, after breakfast, they came and checked on me. Um, they gave me some more pain meds and some more antibiotics. And that was all good and it was all great. And the doctor came and checked on me because I was worried. Because I feel like I had a dent in my butt and I was like, oh my God, what's going on here? But false alarm turns out it was from the incision and it was the way that I was lying so once I actually got up and I was able to look and feel and no problems it's just that um it was the incision and then it's also of course has lots of inflammation so after breakfast after the doctor checked on me the nurse did come by she checked on me the surgeon's nurse not the nurses here at this hospital but the surgeon's nurse she came checked on me and then um Ooh, she said that she would be back to bring my file and my medication, which was all great. It gave me time to talk to my family and they were happy that I was feeling good. I was feeling great and everything. Um, I'm really not in pain. The only thing is I'm, I'm still a little short of breath. It's because I have these big old boobs on me. They're not really big y'all at all. They look like really like a normal size. Like I literally had no boobs, y'all. It's crazy. But anyways, so yeah, I'm still a little bit short of breath. Um, my butt is numb. It is going to be that way for a while. They say that I have good color on my all my incisions. I have good color on my drains, like my, because they can tell now it's mixed with blood and then also um, like fluid. So it's a good color in my drains. I'm draining well. They're happy about the way that I'm draining. I haven't been nauseated. I haven't been dizzy, none of that. It's just like, I, I stood up because they did give me a little shower or whatever. I stood up and I just held on to like the chair. I didn't sit in the chair, I just held on to it. And then it was just like, after that, y'all, I was so tired. I was like, ooh, I gotta sit down. But I didn't wanna lay down, so I sat up in the bed for a while. 
Um, and then eventually I got tired and I was like, oh, I need to lay down. So then I lay down and that was fine. Um, and then, yeah, I'm experiencing like tightness. It's not pain, it's tightness. Everything feels tight. So I did get a circular tummy tuck that goes all the way around my stomach and my back area. And it's just so freaking tight. Like, I'm like, oh my God. But luckily, I don't feel um, like any pain. So I'm happy about that. And um, so I got all my medications and I also got a pain patch. She said it had like narcotic medication, which I was happy to hear because those kind of pain meds are very hard to get here so you have to really have a prescription from a doctor to get those so she said that uh, i'm gonna start the pain that pain patch tomorrow because she said i still have pain meds from here and i still have like a little bit of the anesthesia meds like still in my system so she said that i could start wearing that pain patch tomorrow and she says it lasts for like seven days so and i asked another girl that had surgery here and with them and stuff and she said that the pain patch was superb so i'm looking forward to that so much but I really think that's about it I'll probably of course get footage at the recovery home and I'll let you know how that whole experience was and um it's almost time to go so I'm a little excited and everything and and the faja it doesn't hurt or anything um they actually gave me an extra large in my faja and I was like Brr, excuse me why extra large because I am shaped like a vixen y'all <laughs> my waist is like so small like my waist is small y'all but i still had these big old thighs because i got a lot of skin still on my thighs hopefully i'll be getting that going next year um and you can see they still have a little markings on me right there it's okay yeah i still had these big old thighs and now i got a big old butt <laughs> it's not really big y'all i didn't have enough fat on me my butt is like not big at all but of course i'm gonna be showing y'all the pictures what i can show on youtube and y'all are gonna see everything um yeah but so far i'm doing good i don't feel really bad um at all i'm just tight and my butt is numb those are like my only two real complaints and i hope it stays that way and then of course the little shortness of breath that i have i can't stand for too long because i get tired um, but I'm just glad to be up. I'm glad the surgery went well. I'm glad to share my experience with you guys. And um, I guess next stop, recovery home. <laughs> so I just made it to the recovery house and I'm snug as a bug in a rug, y'all. Unfortunately, the nurse that is here with me does not speak English, but we have been translating on the phone, which is excellent. It is just fine. And I have my little setup here. They just brought my lunch. So that is my setup. That's my lunch. And then I have like a call button here if I need her for anything. Um, I'm actually in a two person room, but no one else is here. So I'm just fine. I like the small kind of intimate setting so that attention can be paid to me. Because I've heard with some of, some of the larger recovery houses, it's just lacking in the care department. Because they're so large, they have so many people to attend to that it could get overwhelming, which I completely understand. That's why I chose somewhere that's small, more intimate, and you know, like the owner literally picked me up. So I know that I'll be taken care of here well, even though there's a little bit of a language barrier, which I'm okay with. Like some people know very English very well. Some of them, you know, just enough to make it, which is fine. And then some of them, not really much, but, it is fine. I can sacrifice English language for quality of care and politeness. And honestly, that is all I have gotten here since I've been here um, at my surgeon's office, at the hospital, and now at the recovery home. It's been nothing but professionalism. It's been nothing but attention to detail, quality of care. Even if I have to like gently remind them of some things like they're on top of it you know um so I feel very comfortable I feel very attended to um I feel very happy I'm I feel good like I'm just same issues the, the shortness of breath you know the tightness 
in my back and my stomach. And that's like pretty much it. I have my Faha on now. Ooh. And also um, I'm wearing a surgical um, bra for my um, breasts. So I'm in my gear and I don't know if this will be the last video from me, but I don't really know what else, you know, I can say unless there's like a major event that happens or something that happens for sure tomorrow, I'll, I'll definitely pop back in because I have my dentist appointment tomorrow. I have to get another iron infusion tomorrow. I have my follow up with my surgeons tomorrow. So I have a lot going on tomorrow. Um, so I'll definitely be popping in tomorrow. Um, and then I'll also for sure pop in whenever I have my first massage. Everybody is like, oh my God, it hurts so much. I'm scared of that, but uh, yeah. And I also have numbness in my tummy. So I finally felt my tummy and it is freaking numb. It's freaking numb. My butt is numb too, but they say all of that is normal. Hopefully eventually it'll go away. And I do, I was surprised, but I do have sensation in, you know, the girl area can't say on youtube but yeah um i was surprised i had sensation there so they were like oh you do that's a good thing <laughs> um because i was totally like thinking i wasn't um but like i said i haven't been nauseous i haven't been dizzy like i'm so happy about that i'm in good spirits now i feel really good so Right now, I can't complain about anything. I'm just about to eat this lunch because your girl is hungry. And I'm going to check back in with you guys. If not tonight, for sure tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I did not film yesterday. I had a busy day. And I know you're probably thinking like, girl, how are you busy? And you just had surgery. Like, where are you going? What you doing? So... I woke up really early yesterday. I didn't get too much sleep just because I was just uncomfortable. Not necessarily pain, but it's just hard to get comfortable. So you have to kind of sleep propped up. And then also I have my BBL pillow like under me and then like my legs are like propped up. So it's kind of hard to sleep. So I didn't get much sleep the night before, but I woke up early and um i woke up got myself ready um i've been walking with the aid of a walker which has been excellent because once you get up and you start walking you get tired really fast it's crazy so i've been walking with the aid of a walker so i got up got myself ready um i've been using the bathroom a lot because i've been trying to make sure i drink my water and get my fluid intake in um the shortness of breath has gotten so much better like oh my goodness gracious it's so much better and like my butt is still a little numb but that's kind of like going away so I feel good about that as well um so after I got up got myself ready I got breakfast um made sure to eat breakfast I had a croissant with two eggs then avocado and spinach so they're feeding me they're feeding me like a healthy diet trying to get my fiber in so I can go number two um and I won't have to hopefully strain or have any issues with that because that is gonna wreck my stomach because you just really don't know how much you use your stomach muscles for like everything everything you use your stomach muscles for okay i'm back i just had to take my meds and so after breakfast um i rested for a little while not gonna lie um then i had to go to my dentist appointment at 11 a.m so i left here fairly early to do that um just to ensure traffic and you know i'm moving like really slow so I go to my dentist appointment. Everything goes fine there, um, except for I totally forgot he was supposed to be doing something else to one of my teeth. So I'm going to go back on Monday when I have my second or maybe third follow-up appointment with my surgeon. It's a little weird. I'm going to tell y'all about it. So everything is fine after I visit with the dentist. And when I come back, um, I take a shower 
Well, I have my massage first and then I take my shower. I know a lot of people talk about the massages and how they're painful. Mine wasn't painful. Maybe she was just, you know, being gentle on me. I don't know. But I have another massage um, pretty regularly here. I think they do them maybe every other day, maybe every day. I'm not sure. I'll find out. Um, because my nurse, my surgeon's nurse is stressing, get your massages, get your massages, get your massages. Because I am swelling or whatever. But I'm wearing my garments 24-7 to help with the swelling and to, you know, shape my body and everything. Um, so after I got my massage, after I took a shower, that is when I had to go back for my first follow-up appointment. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> my nurse brought me some tea. I'm at the recovery home, so they're taking very good care of me. They bring me anything I need. They constantly check on me, and everything's going good here. So anyways, I had my first follow-up appointment, and um, the surgeon's nurse, she checked on me um, because the surgeon was in surgery, but I thought that she would be available, but... That's neither here nor there. She sent the pictures to the doc, the surgeon, and she said everything was fine. And she looked at me and she said everything was fine. And you're like, okay, cool. I'll go home or whatever. And that's pretty much the end of the day. Like, when I came back to the recovery house after the first follow-up appointment, um, I, did, I really didn't do too much. You know, I had dinner. Um, oh, yeah. And I was supposed to be getting iron infusion. So, come to find out, the recovery home has iron infusions um, here. So, I just got it done here. Because um, it was more comfortable just to sit down. Because, you know, it's going to take so long to get it done or whatever. But anyways, um, so I got that done. Got my first follow-up appointment. But then the surgeon's nurse texts me late at night saying that I need to come in tomorrow, which is today. Um, and I'm like, okay. She said... They needed to take um, an ultrasound. I'm thinking maybe of my breasts just to make sure they're all good to go. But I don't know because I asked her, I was like, ultrasound for what? You know what I'm saying? And then she also said that they were going to take the um, kinesiology tape off. I have like um, kinesiology tape. Like, I guess it's to help with the swelling or whatever. Um right there on my breast um and so I asked her like what time and she texts me fairly late like nine after nine and then she didn't text me back so I don't know what's going on we're gonna see I'm gonna talk about it you already know you're gonna find out what the deal is and then also I did get a pain patch too so they have these they don't really like prescribe like narcotic opioid type medications here um, but she was able to get me this pain patch, which she said is like in the, she said it's like in the morphine family or something. Um, because y'all, I hate pain. Okay. And this is coming from a woman that had a seven pound baby vaginally with no epidural. I hate pain. So, um, this has been working well and she's going to give the, I have another appointment on Monday before I leave. So she's going to give me another one to take home with, with me because she said they last for a week. So hopefully two weeks, I shouldn't need this anymore. Um, but I'm just like scared of pain, y'all. Ugh, It's the worst feeling. Um, but that's pretty much it, I think. Hopefully, hopefully I told you guys everything. Um, but yeah, I'm just relaxing at the recovery home and they're taking good care of me. I'm eating well. Um, I get to watch my little TV here of things to do, things to do on the computer. I talk to my baby every day. Y'all know I miss my poo. <laughs> um, and I talk to my family pretty much every day because they're just concerned, you know, of course, because medical tourism gets this bad rap like you're getting surgery like in a basement with like <laughs> random people and they're gonna harvest your organs to sell on the black market and it could be so much further than that the only thing is you just have to really really dig in 
and try to find a surgeon that cares about you and try to find a recovery home that is about people and not money. Like the owner, he was the one that came and picked me up from the hospital and he took me to my first appointment. Like he himself and he's very talkative, a nice guy, very friendly and he just makes you feel like you matter to them. So that's very important because a lot of doctors, even in the States and recovery homes, they don't care. It's just about the money. Get the girls in, get them out. You know, they're not looking for infections or wound care or any of that, you know, and they're not taking care of you properly. So you just got to, you know, like they always say, do your research. <laughs> OK, but that's about it, y'all. Um, it's almost breakfast time. So I'm going to drink a little tea here um, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Okay, y'all, I'm just popping in. So, to let you guys know that I did have an ultrasound <laughs> appointment um, this morning and everything went fine. It was at 11 a.m. Um, so, basically, what she did was she took all that kinesiology tape off of my breasts and um, she had like this little machine or whatever and she just kind of like, you know, rubbed it like around my breasts like to help with swelling and pain and everything. And they say, you know, everything looks good. Everything is fine. Um, I feel really good. I don't, I'm, I'm, I feel like I have more energy. So hopefully like day by day, I do have more energy. My pain patch right here, superb, like superb. The only issue that I had was I noticed like when I did go to the doctor um, today, you know, I had to walk and stuff. I'm still getting tired, but not as fast. And I notice like when I go to the bathroom, like here at the recovery home, um, I was using the walker, but like yesterday and like last night, I didn't, I didn't have to use the walker. So, um, cause I would just kind of like rest on it a little bit. <laughs> I just was like, oh my gosh, how am I so tired like this? Like walking a couple of feet. But um, it felt good getting out, getting some sun on my body. Um, and I also went to the pharmacy there and I bought um, some stuff. I'm going to show it to you, not right now. I'll probably do that later on tonight because right now I'm going to rest a little while because I'm coming back from this appointment. I'm gonna rest a little while. I'm gonna drink some tea. I'm gonna drink some water. I'm gonna have my lunch. I'm gonna have a massage. I'm gonna have my shower. And then I'll check back in with you guys tonight so I can show you my little haul from the pharmacy here because they sell like everything. So mm. y'all will see what I got. Um, But yeah, they say my breasts look good. They took the tape off. Um, I'm pretty good to go. I don't have another appointment until Tuesday and today is Saturday. So Tuesday, I will have my dental appointment to fix my other issue on my tooth that I forgot. Like, I don't know how I forgot it. Um, and then I'll have my last follow-up visit with, um, my surgeon. Um, excited about that so she can see everything and see how it goes. Um, and then also... Hmm, I think I'm gonna get some Botox, y'all, because them lines be lining. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it's about that time. So we'll see how everything goes on Tuesday, though. Um, but yeah, I'll probably pop back in, show my little pharmacy haul, and then you guys probably won't hear from me until Tuesday, honestly, because, like, what the hell else I'm gonna talk about unless something happens or something? I don't know. Hopefully nothing bad happens <laughs> unless something good happens um but yeah i just wanted to pop in and share what happened today i'm feeling good i feel energized i don't feel any real pain it's just that tightness um i'm draining good the color is good in my drains um my scars my little moon scars or whatever they look good everything seems to be going good i'm just continue to um, stay strong and just keep having faith that everything is going to be good and 
I'm gonna get back to the States and everything is gonna be well. I leave Wednesday, so I'll have an appointment the day before I leave. So hopefully everything will be good and I will see you guys later on. Okay, as promised, I am going to show you my little haul from the pharmacy here in Mexico. And these were just items that I was told like by people in plastic surgery groups and online or whatever that um, you could probably pick up and it'll help you with your recovery and everything. So here we go. So the first thing is this. I cannot pronounce it. I don't, I don't. But what it is, is basically it's like a vitamin shot and there are three of them. And this is supposed to like give you energy and help you with your recovery and everything like that. So um, I already had some vitamins that was with my iron infusion, so I'm fine. But like when I get home, I know that I'm gonna like be probably exhausted from the flight and everything. So I'm gonna take one of those um, shots probably like as soon as I get home. Um, but people say they help you, yeah, with your energy and everything. Um, my surgeon's office, they do offer like the IV drips of like the B12 and vitamin, I don't know what they call it, but it's a bunch of vitamins and it's supposed to give you energy. They do offer those. And I think that they um, are $150. So I was like, mm, I'll just buy this from a pharmacy. <laughs> and if I think to do it, I'll put the price on the screen um, so you'll know like how much each of these things are. Okay, and so this next thing is this right here. Um, I'll just bring it up here really close so you guys can see it. But basically, this is supposed to be like collagen lotion. And it's supposed to like collagen cream, collagen lotion, whatever you want to call it. And it is supposed to like um, help with your skin elasticity. So like when your skin is like healing and everything, like supposedly you're supposed to be like tight and supple and it's supposed to like moisturize your skin and everything. And then the next thing is this right here. This is basically like scar gel and they say this works wonders for um, your scars and everything. And this right here, I don't know if you can see it, but this is supposed to be like Latisse for your eyelashes. Um, and if you can see, y'all, I don't have any eyelashes. I don't, um, never had any, unfortunately. So yeah, so basically I'm getting a little beauty treatments. Speaking of this, this is Tretinoin. Help with the wrinkles and all of that too. You don't need a prescription here for that. So that's pretty freaking amazing. And then I also got this a vitamin E oil and it also has a jojoba in it. So that's also supposed to help with the um, scars. So once my incisions are all healed up and the wounds are good, and then I will start with scar treatment and everything. And I'm also gonna get some scar tape but I'm going to get that from Amazon because I know that's going to be um, really cheap. And then the last item I want to show you guys is this stuff right here. Rifacina. Yeah. Okay. So the story is this was suggested by my coordinator. So basically it's like, um, like an antibiotic spray or something that you spray on your wounds as they're healing. And they say it's like wonderful. Like. So I went to the pharmacy to get it, y'all. And I swear, the guy was like, oh, we don't have any. It's sold out everywhere in Tijuana. And I'm like, what? I was like, okay, well, this must really be good. And so I was thinking, okay, who can I hit up? Who can I hit up? Um, I asked my coordinator. She was like, mm, it's all sold out everywhere. And then I asked the owner of the recovery home I met. And he was like, oh, I think I'm pretty sure I have a bottle. I can sell it to you. And I was like, oh, okay. So this is the bottle right here. I think he said it was like maybe one spray out of it or whatever. He only um, charged me 20 bucks for it. And it's kind of on the expensive side. So it must be very popular and it must work well. So yeah, that's my little haul from the Mexican pharmacy here in Tijuana. 
These are just some things that were I saw online. People, you know, hey, pick this up. This is great. This is excellent and everything. So I was really excited to do a little shopping at the pharmacy. And I got a little haul because, you know, I like to shop. So that is what I got today at the pharmacy. But let me tell you what happened tonight. I told y'all I wasn't coming back unless something major happened. So this is what happened. I get my massage and then I take a shower. And while I'm getting my massage, I am nude. So while I'm getting my massage, my faha is washing. And while I'm showering, it's also washing and or drying, whichever one. So yesterday or today, tonight, all these days are running together. Anyways, so all of that happens. I get my massage. I get my sh shower going. My faha is in the dryer. But then my family calls me. So I'm just sitting down waiting on my faha to get out of the dryer. I was on the phone with them for a very long time. And I was out of my faha, y'all. And I promise, I feel like I swelled up like a balloon. Like... You have, you're very tight because you've been cut open and stitched back up. But y'all, the Faha just kind of like sucks you in and like holds you together and compresses you. I did not know how much of a good job that it did. Because when I was out of that Faha, I might have been out of it for maybe like an hour. And I was, I, I you could feel, like I could feel it. I was like, oh my God, I need to get back in my Faha. I didn't feel that support. So, moral of the story, wear your faha. <laughs> Do not delay. <laughs> and um, I didn't get another one because I didn't know what size I was going to need. And I didn't want to get one that was too small or I didn't want to get one that was too big. So, I only have one. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on Amazon and get another one. So I can don't ha so I don't have to be out of my faha. I put it like this: like it feels good for like the first fifteen minutes you're out of it, but after that, I feel like you you start to feel like you are about to swell and stuff. So faha is very important. Make sure you wear it. I know people complain about that it's tight and it hurts and stuff like that. I only think it hurt me like the first day that I wore it. Like, it doesn't hurt me. It feels good to me. The only thing that is like maybe like annoying or whatever is just making sure that it's not like pressing on my drains or like on my incision. Um, because when I first put it on, I had to put like a gauze on my side with it because it was kind of like against my incision. And the same thing um, for, like, my breast, too. But, like, now I don't need the gauze because it's not rubbing. Or maybe my incision is just not as tender now. So, the only the only negative part, like, I experience with my Faha right now is just, like, making sure that it's not, like, pressing tight against my drains. That's, that's the only problem um, that I'm experiencing. And mine is the one that is crotchless. So I can go to the bathroom very easily in it. And what I use is, um, and I have it right here, like a she-we, like female urinal. That is what I use to go. And I just sit down on the toilet backwards and use my little she-we. And I go to the bathroom, no problems, no accidents, no spills, no nothing. Because getting excrement on your fire would be pretty freaking horrible. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Like I said, I'm not going to pop in unless like something major happens or whatever, which I don't foresee anything major happening. Um, but yeah, like it's all good. It's all great. Um, I do have appointments on Tuesday and then I leave on Wednesday. But I foresee it being a very uneventful rest of the time here hopefully i hope everything goes well i heal up nicely i go home and i continue just to re rest and recuperate and you know heal on up i will see you on the next one okay today makes day eight 
in Tijuana, Mexico. I have officially been here a week. I told you guys I was not gonna come back unless I had something to share or some type of news. So yesterday I had no updates. However, something did happen, but I literally could not share because I was in so much pain. So one of the side effects of anesthesia is constipation. And y'all, I was constipated. I had not gone since the night before surgery. I had surgery July 3rd and you know, I was constantly taking stool softener because that is one of the medications that they give me that I take around the clock, you know, so I don't run into that problem. But unfortunately, was not working for your girl. If you have been following along with my GLP-1 journey, I for sure suffered constipation while I was taking the GLP-1s. But I had been off of them for like three weeks before surgery. So now it's been about like four weeks since I've taken any GLP-1s. So I was under the assumption that any type of constipation situation would be no issues. But it was an issue. Y'all, I was in so much pain. It was hurting. I didn't feel good. Like it was so bad. I just laid in the bed. And it had gotten so bad that the guy at the recovery home had got um, some medicine for me. It's called Microlax. And so they don't have like the water type enemas. It's like a jelly substance that you just, you know. So I was like, oh my God. Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So it was like the afternoon time. And I went to the bathroom and um, I was going to try. And I was like hyping myself up like to do it and everything. And then y'all, it just came. Luckily, I did not have to use that. And it just came and I just felt relief. And oh my gosh, goodness, it was the worst experience. Like you would not believe. So... All I got to say is make sure you have a laxative. <laughs> make sure you take your stool softeners. Make sure you're drinking water. You're eating fiber. You're taking fiber supplements. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you don't run into constipation because it is horrible, awful. And like, you know, if you get a tummy tuck and you get your muscles repaired, it's really hard to like strain and squeeze and use those muscles. It's very uncomfortable. It does not feel good even with like passing gas. It's just awful, y'all, awful. Wouldn't wish it on anybody. Um, but luckily that issue has been resolved and I'm feeling much, much better. Um, so yeah, that was my eventful day, but I was too like out of it to even talk to y'all about any of that. Um, there's nothing going on today. Tomorrow, I have my last follow-up visit with my surgeon. And I also have some final dental stuff I need to get done. And while I'm there, I'm going to go to the pharmacy to get, um, that stuff that he got me. It's called, what was it called? Minor lax, mirror lax, medical lax. I don't know. I'll put the name here. I'll show it here. Um, I'm going to get that and bring that home just in case I have more issues because I don't want it to get to the point where I'm like hurting and in pain like I was. Um, and then I believe I need some more Arnica tea. So I'm going to get that. That's supposed to help with the inflammation and the bruising and the swelling and all of that. And then any other medications that I might have run out of, I'm not sure. I'm going to check with the nurses because... I gave all my meds to them and they've been the one to administer my meds. So I'm going to make sure I have all my meds before I go home and um, I will be back. And I will tell you guys how my doctor's appointment went and everything. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is my last day. I'm actually flying out today. So yesterday went great. I talked to the surgeon about my progress and they told me that everything looked good. My wounds were healing fine. They'll be checking in on me every day through pictures and making sure everything looks good. I removed my drains, should be in like three weeks. 
I'll have to remove them. And then also I need to remove like the black stitching. I believe they said in a week or maybe two, but I'll double check. I think it's a week, week and a half, something like that. Um, and then I also have like some extra um, tape under this breast right here. And I'll have to remove that in like a couple of days. But they're gonna double check with me on everything that needs to be done um, because they're gonna be checking on me every day. So to get back to San Diego, I'm going to have transportation pick me up. Um, they should be here in like two hours. I'm just packing up all my stuff and I'll have breakfast here soon. And yesterday while I was out and I went to the doctor and everything was fine. And they also fixed my um, little tooth or whatever at the dentist. So everything went perfect yesterday. I also went to the pharmacy because I needed to get some more pain medicine. I also wanted to get that Microlax that I told you about to help me go number two if I continue to have issues. And then I also got this um, Hydroquinona cream. It's supposed to lighten up dark areas and areas um, that are discolored. So this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> with all of the stuff that I'm bringing back. Like, it's crazy how much medicine and things I'm bringing back. But, you know, I gotta take care of myself. I'm really excited. I'm feeling much better. I'm walking faster. I'm not as hunched over. Um, and then also like when I'm walking and I'm out and about, I'm not getting tired as easily. So we'll just see how today goes. I'm very nervous about flying back it's a four hour um direct flight which is great um i do have wheelchair assistance i'm gonna need it there's no way i can walk through the airport on my own absolutely not um but other than that i think everything is all good i'm ready to go home you know just be in my own space i'm gonna be by myself recovering so that is going to be an interesting beat we'll see how everything goes but that's pretty much it for my surgery vlog y'all um but I think maybe I'll probably check in week by week talk about my recovery and things like that and hopefully this vlog has been useful to you guys and any information that I continue to provide about my surgery my experience or anything like that hopefully that continues to be helpful to you as well so that's it y'all i will see you on the next one